Hi everyone, Gustavo here, back with another video, and this is pretty much nearing the conclusion of covering the um, big idea of creative development before I move on to another big idea as defined in the AP Computer Science Principles courses as defined by uh, College Board. And today I'm going to be covering a important um, process that's often used by many, many people in software um, development industry called the divide and conquer process. And this is an essential process that's used in uh, the design and development of programs. It is a method of understanding uh, the problem and the way how you can understand this problem is pretty much through small little pieces, which is part of the whole uh, name of divide and conquer. So just like what I mentioned, it you know the overall strategy involves uh, decomposing a you know problem or even a set of problems into smaller, more manageable pieces. And the reason why we're doing this, the whole motivation behind this, is that once the problem's broken down into smaller, more manageable pieces, well, all of a sudden it becomes much more easier to solve each small problem individually. And once you pretty much obtain the results of each solution of every single smaller problem, it turns out that this final result is the solution of the bigger problem. So this is a really effective uh, strategy uh, used in software development that is pretty much involves, you know, taking a huge problem, start breaking it down, figuring out how it works, um, how to break it. Uh, you know, pretty much you're trying to understand the overall problem by first breaking it down into smaller pieces that are more understandable. And to, you know, illustrate, su suppose like this is the problem we're trying to solve, and it's a big problem. Well, just like what I described before, you know, the whole strategy is let's break up this big problem into uh, smaller problems and then, you know, let's just break them apart. So that way we don't have to look at the whole big problem. We just are allowed to focus on each smaller problem. And then once we kind of like start focusing on each small problem, we can then essentially straight go out into solving each sub problem individually and this whole process pretty much you know once we obtain the solution of each sub problem we can then kind of like gather them all up and then just combine them back together to f to you know just show that yeah uh if we end up add adding together all of these uh, smaller solutions from these smaller problems it's going to turn out to be the big solution for the big problem and that's the whole basic idea behind this. And however, yes, because I kind of like just talked about the process doesn't mean, you know, yeah, go out, try it out. Because there's a little bit of uh, things to consider. Uh, first and foremost, you must have a problem to solve. Otherwise, the method's not going to work. If you try and apply the method on something that's already solved, you're not really going to understand much of it. You're not really going to um, be able to like understand each part individually because that's the whole idea to understand the overall problem by understanding each sub-problem. And that's pretty much what leads us to the second step. Think about what the problem is asking you to do. The devil is in the detail. If you don't understand what the problem is asking you to do, the next step should be break, up, break the problem into pieces because sometimes it is easier to understand the smaller pieces than understanding the larger piece. So once you've broken up each um, problem into pieces, and once you have completely understood what the sub problem is at, is you know telling you what to do, the next step in that is to do it, implement a solution to each piece. But 
again, just to reiterate, you cannot implement a solution to each piece until you understand what each piece is asking you to do. Otherwise, you're just, you know, implementing something that might be even worse than the problem itself, and we don't want that. We never want that kind of scenario to ever happen. So once we've obtained, uh, you know, e like an impl a s implementation of a solution to each piece, well, we can just combine all of the pieces uh, with one another to obtain the final solution. And to further illustrate, you know, this whole process, I'm going to be covering, uh, you know, an example that many of you have already definitely seen and actually have uh, worked on. And this is on the King Dice Roller assignment. So the structure of the assignment pretty much ends up including a, you know, description of the problem, what you are tasked to do. And this kind of, you know, problem description um, is pretty common when it comes to uh, official work in the industry. You're pretty much, you know, given, uh, you know, some things like, oh, yeah, uh, the person wants this to be done. But at the same time, yeah, that's like pretty vague. That's why it's important to kind of like break it down. And I'm sure that, yes, after a first reading of this problem description for this assignment, many of you many of you may have been like, what are we supposed to do? How can we even approach it? Well, just think about it this way. And I'm going to like read out this problem description. And it, you know, starts out with implement a program that obtains the sum of two six sided die that have been rolled. The player only has three attempts to guess correctly. Every time a guess is entered, the program will state whether the guess is too high or too low from the actual sum while also displaying the number of guesses left. Again, the devil is in the t detail. Think about what the problem is asking you to do. And in addition to you know the first bullet, there's also the additional requirement that we need to ensure to safeguard the player from out-of-bound guesses. And I will be talking about each one of these, uh, you know, important points in the next slide. But again, focus on what the problem is asking you to do. It is always helpful to write things out and think about how to, you know, break about the problem. So when it comes to the problem, you know, here's a decomposition, the divide and conquer approach of solving uh this problem so the problem does say that we have to implement a program that pretty much ends up you know simulating um, a six-sided die throw for two of them so an, uh, an important observation to keep in mind is that when we are rolling two six-sided die if you roll yes even one six-sided die the lowest possible value will be one the highest possible value will be six. When we have two, they are effectively being doubled. The lowest possible value of a two six-sided die roll will be two, and the highest possible value will be 12. And in this case, this is an important observation to make because we will, we will be using this to our advantage when we are implementing a programming solution to it. Now, Another uh, pro like sub problem that I was able to identify in that problem description was determine whether the guess is too high or too low. Well, this can easily be solved using if-else logic, just by uh, ensuring that the in yet that the player input uh, when we compare it to you know the value the actual value um, we can kind of just yes, guide them to let them know whether it's too high or too low. And we can also end up, you know, placing in the out-of-bound guesses within the same problem, sub-problem because out-of-bound guesses will be described as anything that's out of logical bound of the possible values of the two six-sided die. And we've already determined that part of this is pretty much on uh, 
knowing that for two six-sided die, the lowest value will be two, the highest value will be 12. So again, we are using known observations to our advantage to be able to solve these kinds of problems. Now, another uh, prob sub-problem identified is keep track of the number of guest attempts. An easy way of doing this is simply to initialize an integer value with the max number of, in of initial attempts, and then we simply just have to decrement any time the guess is wrong. And this is pretty easy and straightforward to accomplish. And another observation, because the player has a maximum of three guesses. If the player has a max of three guesses, well, we're not going to write the same pieces of code three times, right? One way of accomplishing this is uh, by trying to figure out ways to condense the information. And there's a number of ways that this can be approached the way how I'm approaching it. Maybe with a while loop, maybe you're shoving everything into a function and you just put it inside a while loop to repeat that exact same behavior a total of three times. But remember, there are ways of repeating uh, the behavior of the program up to a specific number of times, which will be shown in the next video. So please keep in mind all of these different uh, problem decompositions when it comes to approaching, uh, you know, solving problems, it can be applied to any problem without an issue. It's just a matter of understanding what, it's just a matter of understanding what the problem is asking you to do and whether you have the knowledge of being able to approach it or not.